Chapter 13 I'm glad you're going. You did really want to go, didn't you? Claus sat on a box in the shelter, his face hidden in the shadows. Carl couldn't understand how he could live here, and he told him so. I have no choice, Carl. But it's horrible, and it's smelly, and it's... Carl blew a cloud of breath into the dark air. It's so cold. It was all of those things, and more. It was scary. This time, Carl had brought Claw's sandwiches and some leftover chicken. But I've got to take the flask back. Mam will miss it. Claus had the duvet wrapped around him. This too? Carl thought he looked comical wearing the red checked duvet. No, forget that. I'll tell her I took it to Oxfam. Do you wish your mum was going with you? Claus asked him. I sometimes think you're a mind reader, Carl said. Yeah, I wish she was. I wish someone was. Somebody just for me. But he hesitated because he didn't want to talk about his mother. It was as if he was betraying her. But I understand. My mum's really quite shy. I mean, she kids on. She's loud and dead cheery and everything. But she gets really nervous meeting new people. And she's scared stiff a fly. But he didn't really believe that. His mum always preferred to be with Mungo. Her favourite. He hated to admit it, but had always accepted it. Until now when he wanted her with him so much. Claus was smiling there in the shadows. He didn't look well, Carl thought, watching him. It couldn't be good for him sleeping on a cold stone floor night after night. I think you should go to the cops, Claus. Claus was suddenly on his feet, the duvet slipping to the floor. No, Carl. Promise me you won't tell about me. I trust you. Carl was offended. I'm hardly likely to tell on you after all this time, am I? Claus smiled again. It's nice you worry about me. You're the only friend I have made since I came here. The only one I do trust. I'll find a way to get home. You wait and see. Carl stood up, ready to go. You'll be careful while I'm away. He was thinking of Mungo roaming the streets at night looking for trouble. Imagining him wandering up here, finding Claus. Why should he be so worried about Claus? Yeah, he was. I will be very careful, Claus assured him. When are you off to London? Next Monday. And I bet I have some great stories to tell you when I get back. The atmosphere in the London Hotel was electric. On the ground floor, a massive function room was being set up for the awards ceremony that evening. Television cameras were already in place. The whole hotel was buzzing. Highlights on BBC News, Mr Samson told them. One of the top newsreaders is the master of ceremonies. The rooms were on the third floor. Dominic and Carl were sharing the room adjacent to Mr and Mrs Samson and Ella was in a single room down the hall. It's not fair, she moaned. My room's not half as nice as theirs, and I'm stuck away down there on my own. Why couldn't I have brought a friend? Because you've not got any, Dominic smirked, and Ella kicked him. Ella, you're lucky you came at all. It was only supposed to be Carl and Dominic. We insisted you come too, and we had to pay for you, so shut up and enjoy yourself. Mr Samson refused to take Ella seriously. He was in a great mood humming as he unpacked, looking forward to every minute of this trip, determined everyone should enjoy it to the full. This is such a wonderful time for us, he confided to Carl when he was in the boys' room helping Dominic put his clothes away. Things for us could have been so tragically different if it hadn't have been for you, Carl. So I'm not going to let anyone spoil it. Dominic came running from the own sweet bathroom. Come and see the size of this, Carl. It's humongous. And we've got two toilets. 
Paul burst out laughing, so did Mr. Samson. Two toilets. What am I going to do with that boy? They were to be ready for the reception downstairs at seven o'clock. With three males in kilts to get ready, Mrs. Samson was running from one to the other. There were ties to be knotted and laces to be tied. At one point, Mr. Samson tripped into the boys' room in disgust. Look at that! He held out the ceremonial dagger that slid into the sock. A plastic ski and do. Can you believe it? Mrs. Samson laughed. William Wallace wouldn't have done much damage with that. Ella was behind him, still trying to help with his tie. She sneered at Col. In your case, I can see the point of a plastic ski and do. Much safer for everyone. Col said nothing. The ski and do tucked into his sock was the real thing. Ice cold steel. Somebody's going to have to help me, Dominic quailed. He came out of the bathroom still in his underpants and carrying his guilt. I haven't a clue how to put this on. Miraculously, they were already in time. Mrs. Samson looked stunning in a pale blue beaded dress and Cole had to admit, even Mizzarella looked pretty good. Her dress was silky and short and she could only manage a smile. She might even look as stunning as her mother. Mrs. Samson stood back to survey the three men. She beamed with pride. You all look wonderful, she said, smiling especially at Col. My, Col, you do look handsome in a kilt. Ella sniggered. Yes, you should wear a frock more often. Col wouldn't get annoyed at her. He had decided to take a leaf out of Mr. Samson's book. He was excited and wanted to save her every moment. Anyway, he had a feeling that Ella wasn't as miserable as she pretended to be, that she was just as excited at the thought of tonight as he was. There was a host of celebrities at the Act of Courage Awards. Dominic was overwhelmed. I've seen that one on TV. What's her name? He pointed out a red-haired glamour girl who was wearing a dress with no back on it. Mrs. Samson dotted when she saw it. Wearing a dress like that? This is a children's awards ceremony after all. Dominic grew even more excited. Look, that's the one who does the gardening programme. Famous faces flitted in and out of the crowd, smiling, talking, shaking hands. Suddenly, Ella was jumping up and down with excitement. It's my favourite band. They're here, all of them. They're totally gorgeous. Cole followed her gaze to a smarmy looking group of boys. He thought they looked stupid, not gorgeous. She let out a series of excited yells. For once, she forgot to be cool. I've got to get their autographs, I've got to! Cole and Dominic looked at each other. Is she an embarrassment or what? Dominic said. The round tables in the function room were festooned with flowers and balloons, and at the far end, a stage with microphones and a lectern stood ready for the presentation after the meal. The meal they were treated to was sumptuous. Melon and soup and peach sorbet, and the angry-eyed salmon that was laid on the table for the main course seemed to stare straight at Col. It looks as if it's ready to eat me, Col laughed. The meal, however, didn't suit Dominic. Can I get pie and chips? He asked the waiter. Ella was mortified. Pie and chips? They can't take you anywhere. But the waiter only laughed and whispered to Dominic. Tonight, nothing's a problem, young man. I'll make sure you get your pie and chips. And he did. He must be under the impression that you're the hero, Ella told him sarcastically. He's really nice. I like him, Dominic said. Just then, the BBC newsreader who was hosting the event announced that after a short interval, the awards would be presented. That's what I want to be when I grow up, Dominic said. A BBC newsreader? Cole asked. No, a waiter. I think that would be a brilliant job. You would meet so many interesting people. Cole laughed so much, Ella looked at him suspiciously. 
Now I've saved the life of a future waiter, he thought to himself. Cole was amazed when the award ceremony began in earnest. One by one, as their deeds were extolled by the newsreader, each young hero strode up onto the stage to tumultuous applause and was awarded their trophy by a chosen celebrity. The boy, who in spite of being badly injured, had saved his father from freezing to death by going for the mountain rescue team when his father was injured. The girl, whose face was scarred for life because she ran back into a burning building to save her sister, then threw her down to the waiting fireman before being rescued herself. Could he have done that? No, that was real bravery. What he had done wasn't brave. He hadn't even wanted to save Dominic. He had been prepared to let him drown, let him die in that icy loch. He had even been on the verge of stealing from him. How ashamed he was of that now. No, what he had done, he had done without thinking. It had been as natural as snapping your fingers away from a window as it was about to slam shut on your fingers. No, what he had done wasn't brave. But this, all of this, was bravery. He felt ashamed he shouldn't be here. He wasn't a hero. He was a fraud. If he had the courage, he would walk out, go home right now. But he wasn't even brave enough to do that. Then, while all this was going through his head, his name was called. It was his turn.